Hey YouTube, Jobin here. Uh, a few days ago I made a video about my experiments with acid etching a knife blade and that proved to be pretty popular. Uh, most people liked it and I got a lot of questions about how I did it. So today I'm going to take you guys through the process. Now I'm using a ferric chloride solution which is an acid and the first thing we have to do is we want to in some way protect the parts of the knife blade that we absolutely do not want to etch at all which is why this knife, this EL04 here, is looking so fabulous at the moment because I have coated the edge in nail polish there might be better things for this, actually if anybody has any ideas I'll talk about some of the downsides as I get in. If anybody has any ideas, let me know. But, you know, it was in the house. And it dries quickly and forms a hard surface that is resistant to the acid I'm using. So, uh, since I did that earlier, I'm going to show a little bit of how I actually go about making that little edge pattern. Uh, one of the problems with nail polish is it's actually designed to dry very quickly and to make a smooth even coat. So getting, to, getting like defined edges on it is a little tough because it tends to sort of blob. Um, that's what it's designed to do. Which is one of the th one of the reasons I I'm thinking maybe some sort of paint would work better. But this works. And rather than going for a smooth line which would be less interesting and actually harder to do. I've just decided to go for this sort of ripply pattern. More visually interesting and much more suited to the material I'm using to form the coating. You have to work fairly fast with this stuff. It does set up quite quickly. It remains tacky for several minutes, but it, it only remains paintable for a few seconds, actually, bef before it just starts getting really gummy. So, you get the idea. Focus, please. There we go. And rather than having you guys sit through all of touching that up and doing the other side, as they say in the cooking shows, here's one I prepared earlier. So, uh, let's go on to showing another important part of the process. You don't want to impair your knife's function when you do this to it. So you need to coat or mask off the areas where the pivot washers go, the pivot hole itself, and any place where the locking mechanism interfaces. Ah, awkward to push this on camera. Hold on. I need a different tool, where's... Dang it, need to find something. And we're back. I needed to tap out the pivot uh, pin with a hammer and punch, and I just... I needed to find the stuff, and there wasn't really any way to film it easily. Okay. It's actually pretty much holding 
together. Actually, before I take it all the way apart, maybe too late. I want to mark something off. Just for reference, in case I need it. Or no. Where the handle comes to. And by the way, I don't think I mentioned it. I'd recommend uh, doing any painting or whatever you want to do on the blade before taking the knife apart, uh, just because um, uh, with a knife that's together, you can set it down on its side on a table and not have uh, your wet paint or nail polish touching the surface. So this is dry now, but. You can balance the blade up, but it's just a little thing that might help. Okay. Now, let's see. Uh, these washers are pretty much the same size. Again, for reference, just marking where the washers are. I could probably coat this whole tang section. I might do that, but I just want to know what sizes I'm working with here. Okay. Now this is an axis lock knife, so the areas you're going to want to preserve from any kind of etching are going to be uh, where the washers are, which I just marked, and this area here, which is where the lock bar pushes in, and for that matter probably uh, this, this span there. So I'm going to go ahead and paint those sections. You know what? I'm just going to coat this whole bit right here, because why not? Also, it's going to be very important to get inside the pivot hole, because otherwise the acid is going to eat away inside the pivot, and you're probably going to end up with blade play that, you can, that you'll not be able to do anything about just because the pivot hole will be oversized.
Okay. Oh, and actually, better get this right here where the stop pin touches. And last, but I'm thinking perhaps the most annoying to do, actually, Okay, uh, back again. Uh, that was really annoying to do with the camera in the way, so... Also, the battery died, but... Uh, painting the thumb studs was kind of tricky, and I'm going to need to go in with a toothpick or something once it dries and chip out the stuff I don't want from around there. I also coated a little bit more of the tang. But this one is basically done, so we are going to set it somewhere safe. And move on to the Enlon or the EL01. Okay, now since uh, this one is a liner lock, the uh, portion the lock bar interfaces with is this part on the tang here. So you have to make extra sure that gets coated. You obviously need the uh, place where the washers go clear, and you also need to make sure nothing major happens to the detent hole there. So, most important spots, there, uh, there where the stop pin goes, the detent hole, and where the washers go on both sides. I'm not going to show all that because it's pretty much the same as the one I just did before. So I'm just going to cut here and skip on ahead. Okay, we're back with the uh, Enlon EL01 blade and there's a little step I didn't show just because it would turn out to be redundant later. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what I did and why I did it. Um, Basically, the finish on the blade was way too smooth, and the wax I'm going to use in the next step wouldn't even stick to it. So what I did is, the way it is now, I dunked it in the acid for just a couple minutes, um, which, you know, microscopically roughed up the surface. 
um, took it out, cleaned it off, and now we're ready to move forward with the wax step, which will actually apply the droplet pattern. Okay, now I'm going to use melted wax to apply the drip pattern. I suppose maybe I could just keep going with the nail polish, but among other things, it seems a little more economical considering how much of it doesn't even hit the knife blade uh, the way I'm doing it to get the kind of spray I want. Um, so grab yourself a section of floor, put down some uh, put down some newspaper or something. Get some candle wax and a little stick. start just splashing streaks and drips on the blade wherever you want them or wherever they happen to go depending on how random a pattern you want obviously you could do this a lot more deliberately and do a more regular pattern more controlled or you could just go for organic and random That looks pretty good. And I'll do the same thing to the other side, and then we'll be ready for the acid soaking. Okay, we're at about the 30 minute mark now, and every few minutes I've been stopping by and sort of picking up the wire and giving them a little swish um, <clears throat> uh, just to try to get the, the the there's like a gunk that forms on the blade which is actually the metal that's getting eaten away I want to make sure that gets uh, swished off it uh, so that the reaction continues but at this point at about halfway through I'm actually going to pull them out and clean them off and make sure it's going evenly because at, at this point, if, if there was like a grease spot or something that was impeding the reaction, it probably wouldn't be too late to fix it. And it would show up. I should also point out that I am using a steel wire to suspend these. It is coated though, <laughs> which uh, protects it enough that it's not going to get eaten straight through. Stuff isn't that acidic anyway. It's not like movie acid. Which is, by the way, before anybody asks, why I'm not wearing rubber gloves. You know, it'll eat a <laughs> few thousandth of uh, steel if you leave it in there for an hour, but if, if you get a drop on your hands, y you can't even feel it. You just wash it off with water. Hey, that actually looks pretty good. I don't know if the lighting in here is, is good because it's night now. There's no natural daylight, but that looks like a good even etch. On the EL04, so this one goes back in. Let's check out on the 01. Drip, drip, drip. That looks like it's coming along nicely.
back and it goes home stretch.